The first crew to show up is the demo crew. They show up with the bobcat in the truck. They're here to take out the old concrete driveway and put in four inches of road base. Bobcat has come in now and it's removed seven inches of material. We put the string line here and the string line represents finished elevation. We want the subgrade to be below the string line seven inches. And when it is, this area is ready for base. Now that the Bobcat's removed seven inches of material, it's put in four inches of base. We put the string line down one more time to make sure we have enough base, and we should be about three inches from top of base to finished elevation. After the demo crew finishes, the pavers are dropped off the next morning ready for the installation crew. The insulation crew shows up with their truck and trailer. The job has been roughly graded by the demo crew, and the first thing the insulation crew does is put down their stakes and string lines to fine tune the base. So what Martin is doing is he's finding the exact elevation of the top of the surface. The string represents the top of finished grade. So Martin's setting the string, and the string represents the top of finished elevation. And he's checking to make sure we have the slope going in the right direction. And once the string is set, the base is set to the string exactly three inches below. Okay, now that we have our string set, we can fix the base to the strings. And you can see we get a nice, level, even surface that they use the pipes to screed on top of. So when we're done, the base will be exactly three inches lower than the string. After fixing the base by hand to the right elevation, we get the right moisture content in the base and compact it twice in opposite directions. Okay, now the base has been compacted and it's ready for the sand. And what they do, they've come in and they put a bunch of little piles of sand with the wheelbarrows so it makes the screeding process for the sand much easier when they're dealing with little piles instead of, instead of big ones. What Martin's doing now, he's setting the exact level of the pipe to screed the sand to. And we're setting that about a quarter inch high because when we compact those pavers, they will, they will get pressed down about a quarter inch. Now Martin's screeding the sand to give us a nice even bed to lay the pavers on top of. After the sand is screeded, we pull the, the pipes out. Now we fill in that groove where the pipe used to be with sand, and we go back by hand and fix it with a trowel to fix it flat. So now Martin's making the pattern square with the garage.
Once a sand is prepared, the string line used square from the garage is used as a reference to continue laying pavers. And what you see here is done in about five minutes. Now that the pattern or field is laid, we put the PVC pipe in to find out exactly where our border is going to be so we can mark it and cut it. Now that we've dug the trench, we fill the trench with concrete to set the border, which retains the pavers. Another reason we put the border in after we lay the field is that now we can set our border to the field, which has a nice contour to it, and we don't have to figure out the border all by itself. We just follow the field. After the border's been set in concrete, we compact the pavers with no sand to take out any unevenness in the pavers. After we compact the pavers with no sand, we dump dry sand over the pavers, which allows the sand to fall in between all the joints. And compact one more time. This shakes the bricks to allow all the sand to fall in between the joints and creates interlock. Once it's been compacted with the sand, we broom off all the excess sand and test it with water to see how it drains. And then we give it a final cleaning. We hose it off and broom off all the excess sand. 